Um, so we're going to be hearing in a wee minute about um, what we can do as individuals. But we know that when we use our voices together collectively, it has a lot of power. So we wanted to think a little bit about what we as a church, as a body of people, could do for climate change. What can we do together? So first of all, um, there's a few things happening. So you might have heard about the disruptions that are coming Glasgow's way with the Climate Change Summit, COP26, which starts in November. So this is basically a group of, of international leaders who are coming together to discuss what they should do about climate change. And different leaders from different countries have different opinions on what needs to be done. Um, in order to make changes, it has to cost. These things are painful for us to make changes. They're not easy. Sometimes they cost financially, sometimes they cost in terms of laws and things like that. And so it's not easy for these group of leaders to make decisions. So we want to encourage our government, we want to encourage our government to make the hard choices that are going to make the difference in the climate. So Tear Fund, um, which is a Christian organisation, have uh, some great resources on their website. So I'd really encourage you to have a look on their website. There's some really good videos that kind of explain in greater detail what Boo has been talking to us about, about what climate change is, why it's important. But they have also organised a few things that we as the church in the UK can do to try and hold our leaders accountable, to try and um, hold our leaders to make changes. So the first thing to look at this website, so tierfund.org, and if you go onto the campaigns, and COP26 is the, is the climate change summit that is coming to Glasgow in November, and that has all of the details there. They also have a few things happening during the summit. So the summit um, is running, as I say, at the start of November. And on the 6th of November, there is a march, OK? Um, and there's lots of things happening in Glasgow. Now, there's some people coming to stay um, in the church, uh, Just Love, and uh, there's going to be some more details about that. But if you're interested in demonstrating and showing that climate change is something that is important to you, to us as a people in the UK, then you can certainly get involved with that on Saturday the 6th of November. On Sunday the 7th of November, I thought this was a wee bit bigger, but uh, apologies if you can't read it very well. On Sunday the 7th of November, Tear Fund are also live streaming a church service. So we're, I think, going to show it afterwards, probably going to be at the Charter. Um, the full details will, will come in time, but it's going to, it looks like it's going to be at the Charter. We're going to show the Tear Fund service after our own church service, OK, um, not live. And after that, there's going to be a workshop on climate change, OK? So that will be um, looking at exploring the things that we can do, particularly in how that we hold our government accountable, how we um, ask our MPs to stand up for the things that are important to us. So that workshop will be run at the Charter on the 7th of November, if that's something that you'd be interested in. I would encourage as many of us to get along to that as possible, because when we bring our voices together, it has a lot more power. And the last one I want to highlight to you is the 30th of October, through, so starting on the 30th of October, through the COP26 summit, the Glasgow Tron Church has a prayer space that they're encouraging people to get along to, um, to pray as Christians in Glasgow for the leaders, for the discussions, um, whilst COP26 is on. So a little bit more in terms of what we as a church group here can do, if we just move on. Um, we're going to be looking at things as a life group. Yeah. So particularly we want you to be praying. So we know that the leaders can have their own agendas, but God is in control of everything ultimately. And we need God to shift um, people's opinions, people's hearts, and help these leaders come to a, a kind of consensus during this COP26. So I'd encourage you in your own kind of personal prayer times to be praying. There are resources, again, on the Tear Fund website um, of how to pray. There's um, quite a few documents, so you can have a wee look through them if you're looking for if you're not sure what to pray for and how to pray. There's also prayer updates that you can get via the Tear Fund um, a, an app. So basically, if you put your, your phone number in, and you can the number's on the screen if you're looking for it, and they send you um, prayer uh, kind of suggestions each day. So that might be helpful as well to aid your kind of prayer. Um, so yeah. As life groups as well, um, we're encouraging you to pray with your life groups. If you're not part of a life group, there is a Renew Our World campaign. So again, you can look up Renew Our World online. 
and they have um, a kind of prayer slot so you can sign up for prayer slots and they want to see hundreds of people in each hour of every day during COP26 praying for the for the summit. As life groups, some of the life groups up here have um, have signed up for specific times so we encourage you to speak to your life groups and um, encourage you to pray together for those things uh, and also having a think a little bit more what can you do as a life group so there's lots of things and we'll be coming on to that as individuals um, so you could be thinking along the lines of litter picking you can be thinking of along the lines of um, switching off electricity and what can you do together to combat climate change because they were always more powerful when we are together. If you're not in a life group, can you gather some friends together? Can you be thinking about praying together, about tackling climate change together as a group? And we're going to look at some of these things, particularly in the um, seminar or the, the workshop on the 7th of November, so that might be helpful for you. We want to think about advocacy and that concept of holding the government accountable. So in 2015, um, there was a, another climate change summit where the leaders came together, that was in Paris, and they made a, a kind of pledge that they were going to stop global temperatures rising above two degrees. And, and since then, the governments haven't been very good at, at sticking to it. And actually, even the pledge that they made wasn't enough. It's not enough to stop these temperatures rising, to stop things getting worse and worse. And so we really need to be holding our government accountable to saying, that we need them to stick with the pledges that they're doing and we need them to go beyond the pledge that they made in Paris. And one of the best ways that we can do that is, is by writing to our MPs. We have elected our MPs, our MSPs. These people are in their jobs because we put them there. So we have a, we have a power and we have a voice. Now, we've got um, a contact details for um, all of the kind of elected officials for our area that are, we can write to. And I'd encourage you, if you feel confident, to write a letter to um, our MPs, MSPs, Boris Johnson, the Environment Secretary, then write a letter. Um, that's a powerful um, tool for these, these elected officials to know that we care about this and we want them to do something about it. And so I, I encourage as many of us as possible to be writing to them. We will go over some of that in this workshop on the 7th of November of how to write um, and we, maybe we can write together as a church. But I think we really need to be trying to encourage our, our MSPs, our MPs. We are, feel this is important and we want you to do something about that. I think that might be the last one. So for this one, we also have a petition that Tier Fund are, are um, running. So it is available on their website. But if you have, your, if you have smartphones with a QR code reader then I encourage you to get out your QR code just now. And if you scan the QR code we've just made, then it'll take you to the pledge um, site for this petition. So again, this petition will be going to the government and asking them to hold it accountable. This is your opportunity to get your phone out in church. Take it. Um, so if you can do that with us just now, you might need to, to zoom in. I found it was the, the glare struggled a little bit until you zoomed in. And it hopefully will take you to the tier fund page and you just need to fill out your details and add your name to that list now there's quite a few campaigns the renew our world have a few different campaigns on the go so if you um, like scrolling the internet i would encourage you to have a look at the tier fund web website look at some of the petitions that are available and add your name to these things every name every voter that is added to these things hold our government accountable and help to make change okay so these will be at the back if you would like to um, write to any of your MPs, MSPs, etc. And I would really encourage you to do that. If you don't feel confident to do that, as I say, we're going to be going over that on the 7th of November. So get yourself along to the workshop and we'll do it together. And we'll hopefully um, make some change from the government point of view. Cheers.